He's in. Hard. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful morning here in Harlingen, Texas, and my patriotism meter is just tapped out. Let's give a hand to those young men that uh, performed for us. Very, very impressive. What an honor it is to be here with you to celebrate Veterans Day. Again, my name is uh, Manuel Padilla, Jr. I'm the Chief Patrol Agent for the Rio Grande Valley sector uh, here in South Texas. Uh, we gather today to honor the men and women that have sworn oaths to defend our country and our citizens against all enemies, foreign and domestic. These heroes, many of them with here, uh, here with us today, have found themselves away from the comforts of their homes, from the comforts of our loved ones to serve selflessly around the world. Statistically, less than 1% of the American population chooses to stand, to raise a right hand, and to write that proverbial check to the people of the United States. And that check is redeemable for an amount up to sacrificing their own lives. Less than 1%. Think about that for a minute. Less than 1% voluntarily choose to serve in our armed forces. And I emphasize voluntarily because each and every person serving in the military today is doing so, or doing so because they made a conscious decision to do so. They are not compelled, they are not threatened, they are not coerced, they have volunteered. They stand and swear that solemn oath, quote, freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, so help me God, unquote. 
knowing full well that that promise may cost them their own lives. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom is not free. These men and women raising their right hands and joining the military concede some of the very basic constitutional rights and freedoms that they vainly defend. Again, they surrender the comforts that we take for granted and serve a cause far greater than themselves. Many have paid the ultimate sacrifice protecting our own very way of life. And as they serve, they don't join unfettered freedom of speech. They cannot come and go as they please. They cannot quit a job at a moment's notice. They are not allowed to keep and bear arms on their own personal or personal arms in the military installations. They cede these rights, these freedoms, while hold, holding steadfastly true to the sworn oath to defend the rights and freedom to exercise our own rights here in America. There is a poem, and it's actually in, the, uh, in your programs there, that captures vividly what veterans do for our country. And it goes like this. It is the soldier, not the preacher, who has given us the freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the cross. It is a soldier, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is a soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is a soldier, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is a soldier who salutes the flag who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn this very flag. In this day and age, we are constantly reminded of the evil and criminal threats that we face, from unfriendly nation states to armies of ISIS. There are enemies around the globe looking for opportunities to do us harm to pretty much change the way that we live here in the United States. They would for not one moment hesitate to launch an attack if it was not for one thing and one thing only. And that is a steely resolve, the unwavering patriotism, and the fearsome capabilities of our military. And the times we have been attacked, our soldiers are the first ones to spring into action and take the fight to our enemies wherever it is needed. Now here at home, our law enforcement, our first responders, many who are veterans, protect the citizens from international and, international and domestic terrorists and criminals. I am very proud to say that Customs and Border Protection, our own agency, was recognized this year as one of the 10 best com uh, companies for veterans. Veterans represent about 35% of our workforce, and we are forever grateful for their continued public service. In closing, I ask that you observe when you travel abroad and take notes of the freedoms and comforts we take for granted here. From the clean rest areas along our highways to the first responders when you get into an accident. And you will quickly realize why so many people around the world want to be part of the American dream. Even with our imperfections, we are by far the best country in the world. And we owe so much of that to our veterans. I ask that all the veterans uh, present here today, if you stand to be recognized and thank for your service, please stand with me.
Thank you. On behalf of the United, Board, uh, United, United States, States Border Patrol, God, God bless you, God bless your families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.
Frey, or Colonel Glendale, United States Marine Corps retired, Superintendent of the Marine Military Academy, Chief Manuel Padilla, Jr., United States Border Patrol. Colonel Hill requested all veterans present this morning move forward and join him in reviewing the cadets as they pass in review. In ancient times, commanders would form the line of battle much as we form the parade formation today. Our parade is a descendant of this combat formation. In preparation for battle, commanders ordered the units to pass in review. Each unit then marched by in front of the commander so he could observe every platoon and man to evaluate their state of training and discipline. This tradition remains today as the final act in a parade and for much the same reason, to afford the commander a closer look at the marching ability and state of discipline of his units. Ladies and gentlemen, during the past review as the national colors come abreast of your position, please rise. You may be seated after they pass.